Look, while we've got some time left, uh, Greg, our guest here tonight, has got a bit of Irish heritage, but he is a quintessential, a quintessential Australian. But you saw those election results in Ireland. Um, the, the Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, is from Fine Gael, uh, Fine Foyle, Michael Martin, and Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald. Now, Sinn Féin only contested about 40-something seats out of 160. Sinn Féin, the political arm of the IRA, won 37. Fine Foyle won 38. Fine Gael won 36. Independence, 19. Greens, 12. Labor, 6. Social Democrats and so on. Greg, just simply, what do you make? Have these people got a problem with memory? Yeah, they have, Alan. Uh, so it's an interesting division of the voters there. Nobody over 65 voted for Sinn Féin. Loads and loads of people under 30 and under 25 voted for Sinn Féin because the Irish, like the rest of the Western world, have suffered from the most terrible ideological education where they're not, they're not taught any history. But I am truly ashamed of my Irish cousins, my genetic uh, cousins. I mean, I'm an Australian, I'm not an Irishman, but I'm very proud of my Irish heritage. But, you know, it's said of Australia, Alan and uh, Peter, that we deal with bad fortune incredibly well, but we can't cope with good fortune. And this must be the Irish gene, you know. <laughs> 800 years of British oppression, 100 years of terrible poverty, every misery you could imagine, the potato famine and everything else, never turned them into extremists. They were always lovely people. They always had great common sense. They always had a laugh at themselves. Five minutes of economic sunshine and they've gone crackers. They've voted for <laughs> people who have never repudiated the most sickening violence, murders, slaughter of innocent civilians. Now, it's certainly true the provisional IRA weren't the only people who did this in Northern Ireland. There were unionist paramilitaries and so on. But I would, I, I am ashamed that the Irish would vote for an outfit which Absolutely. used to take a mother of ten, accuse her of being an yep. informer, and then execute her in cold blood. Absolutely. Used to blow up shopping centres full of women and children. Mm. Mm. And these people have never had a purchase in Irish politics before. No. The old IRA of 1916 to 1922, you know, you mightn't agree with them, but they tried to work by the laws yep. of war. They didn't yep. attack civilians. They were, no. they were very sort of chivalrous, decent people. This provisional IRA... They were murderers and drug runners and... Yep. Uh, sh and and, and I really just think this is a terrible moment. Modern Ireland should be ashamed of this. Good comment. That's why I wanted to get it from you tonight. Uh, Peter, the one thing I suppose we can say, apart from everything else, they don't play bad rugby either, but it's an extraordinary thing for a little country in the 19th century. They had the world's leading poet in T.S. Eliot. They had the world's leading playwright in George Bernard Shaw. They had the world's leading writer of many dimensions in Oscar William O'Flaherty Wills Wilde and the world's leading novelist in James Joyce. Not bad, T.S. Eliot, George Bernard Shaw, Oscar Wilde and at the end of the day of course uh, there were so many others there who contributed in a little small community but it is rather sad reflection.